Electronic shifting, is it amazing? Is it worth it? Let's talk about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, the supple life, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. Bike world has been all abuzz with the wonders of electronic shifting. I, on the other hand, have always been a little bit skeptical. Uh, as you guys know, I've done a whole series trying to recreate the uh, very expensive electronic axis mullet shifting system. But luckily I've had the chance to ride a bike with electronic shifting over the last couple months. The very cool, very titanium uh, bear claw Thunderhawk. So I've had the opportunity to actually test it side by side next to my budget mullet setup. Which is better, which is worth it? We will get to that in a second. Uh, but first I thought I'd give you my kind of impressions uh, on electronic shifting after having used it. So from a performance perspective, you hit a button and it moves the derailleur and it works. And it should given how much a lot of these systems cost. I think some people will say it shifts better than a mechanical system. I'm still kind of on the fence on that. You push it, it moves, you push it, you push another button and it moves back. For the SRAM access derailleur, it actually makes a little kind of sound. One kind of real functional difference I did notice is that the amount of lever throw it takes to actuate the shift is drastically less on an electronic shifter. So where this might make a difference is if you have you know, a tough time moving your hands over, if you have arthritis or nerve damage uh, with your hands, definitely a lot easier shifting with the electronic shifter. But I think if you're fairly able-bodied and if you can make the general shifting motion without a problem, then it's kind of you know, a moot point. I think another big plus that a lot of people tout about electronic shifting is that it's much easier to set up the bike. You don't have to run extra cables or cable housing, all that stuff. So much easier from a bike shop perspective. Another kind of bonus to that is if you travel, again, there's no cables to kink if you have to put your bike in a box. Much easier to remove the derailleur completely and put it in a safe place because it's not attached to a cable. So I can see if you're traveling a lot with your bike, then it does actually add a functional uh, advantage. Another positive thing about electronic shifting, I kind of touched on this earlier, is that it has a ton of adaptive uses. So again, if you have limited use with an arm or if you have one arm and if you need to shift both up and down on the same side, then you can do that with the levers or the little blip modules. You can put shifting wherever it's convenient for you. So electronic shifting, definitely awesome for adaptive use cases. So what are the cons of electronic shifting? Well, the big one, the huge green elephant in the room is the amount of money it takes. There's no small amount for which essentially is a servo motor that moves your chain left and right. So looking at the SRAM Axis uh, system, I've been testing the derailleur alone costs $700. Uh, the shifters are about 400 bucks a pop. Add to that the special cassette and the chain, and you're looking at you know close to two grand, if not over, just to shift gears on your bike. Compare that with my budget mullet build. You get essentially the same range in gearing for a fraction of the cost. So definitely a hefty upfront investment. But I also think you should factor in the cost of replacement. Uh, I've been riding the bear claw, taking it on some single track. And when I do, I am super paranoid about bashing that rear derailleur into a rock. Uh, for one, because it's not my bike and to replace it would be another 700 bucks. So depending on how you ride and how, how fat your wallet is, uh, definitely something to consider is the cost of replacement, especially when riding off-road. Another thing that kind of gives me pause is the notion of charging uh, up your bicycle. So people do say that you can run your bikes for weeks uh, without having to, to charge it. And for me, whenever I take the bear claw out, there's always that bit of existential doubt that did I charge it enough uh, for this long ride that I'm gonna do or, or am I gonna be stuck in the middle of nowhere uh, on one gear? So far with my time with the Bear Claw and the SRAM Axis, I actually did have it run out of batteries once because I just took I just took it at face value of at people's words that you don't have to charge it for weeks. I think I went about a week and a half and then the battery died, leaving me stuck in the middle gear. Uh, thankfully, I was in town and it's fairly flat here, so it wasn't a huge deal. But after that, it has made me more diligent in terms of charging the bike the night before if we, if we know we're going to go on a longer ride. So I had my budget mullet system compared to the full-on electronic SRAM axis uh, shifting. Well, it definitely won in price. It was much, much cheaper. It didn't win in convenience because you know, if you guys saw the series, definitely some trial and error and some hacking going on. So not the most plug and play, but I think we've sorted it out enough that you guys can 
can do it pretty easily. I think the analog system definitely wins in terms of replacement cost. You know, when I'm riding the Crest Bambora, I don't feel as paranoid uh, riding on rocky terrain or trying to thread the needle through some rocks. Because if I do break the trailer, yes, it'll cost me some money, but it's not gonna be 700 bucks. So now comes the tricky question, is it worth it. There's definitely a lot to like. Like I mentioned, the shifts have been reliable. The setup has been pretty easy. Definitely takes less pressure to shift, but at the end of it, at least for me personally, it's not, it's, it's just not worth it. I kind of enjoyed the novelty of electronic shifting. It's cool when you tap the button that the derailleur just moves and makes a little electronic sound. There's definitely a fun novel aspect to it. It's kind of like using that old uh, robot thing that came with the Nintendo. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. But from a practical standpoint, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. For one, I can't afford it. I can't afford to replace parts on it. And if I'm going to be spending that kind of cheddar on different parts on components, I want it to last a long time. And electronics, as we know, is constantly shifting. Battery technology could change, you know, near field communications can change very quickly, making your current electronic shifting system obsolete. Whereas a cable is a cable is a cable is a cable. With the cost of most electronic shifting systems being around that $1,500 to $2,000 mark, I think that money could be better spent on a really nice light wheel set. I'd probably put my money into a wheel set first before going electronic shifting. That said, if you already have a nice wheel set and, her, and have a hole burning in your pocket or can afford it, or you have very specific adaptive needs, then by all means, go electronic shifting. I will say with the whole coronavirus thing going on and just thinking about uh, future proof and the apocalypse and disaster bikes and all that stuff. For the money, considering all those things, uh, reliability, access to electricity, uh, the, the ready availability of parts, I would probably definitely go analog for those reasons as well. So that's what I think of electronic shifting. What do you guys think? Are you guys all electronic shifting or are you still analog bike riders like me? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, and as always, keep the supple side down.